The Get On Living Saintly campaign is sponsoring this podcast to remind you to keep your spending in the community. Supporting local businesses keeps food on the table for our friends and neighbors. Follow them on social media and learn more at GetOnLivingSafely.com. Nothing but a smile on my face Even when you fall Musician Pat Ferguson has history in lacrosse From college to playing in the local music scene From there he moved to Madison, Wisconsin And worked on his songwriting And released his first album, Light of Day, Dark as Night, in 2018 We chat about his sophomore solo LP And what's next for this upcoming artist you can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Pat Ferguson. I was born in Houston, Texas, actually. Lived there for first part of my childhood. Born and raised in Manitowoc, Wisconsin from there. Musically speaking, we always had music in the house. My dad is a big country music fan, old school country music fan. Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, Hank Williams... But then he also loved the Beatles and the Eagles and a bunch of the bands that came up in the 60s and 70s. So introduced to it at a a very, very early age. Picked up the guitar when I was 12, I think, if I remember correctly. So yeah, and the rest is history from there, I guess. I've known you from your time in lacrosse. You went to school here, I believe. You were a big part of the music scene for a while. Can you give us a rundown of your time spent in the Cooley region? Sure. Yeah, we, I lived there for seven years, went to school, formed a band with my brother, Christian Staley, called the Smoking Bandits. And we did some pretty extensive touring from 2003 to 2007, something like that. I finished college and stuck around lacrosse for a little bit. My wife and I were married and we met in lacrosse and were married uh, while we still lived there and hung around for a couple of years after school while uh, we were still parading around with that band of yahoos and the bandits <laughs> and then moved to Madison from there, but still with very close ties to lacrosse. I mean, we're found myself venturing back quite often. I mean, the bandits were still playing quite a bit. We still have such close ties there, but yeah, my, our time there was, was incredible. It really was. I mean, from the, we have, a, it's interesting. We have multiple phases of our life there, right? We have the college phase where we have a whole group of friends that all kind of shifted and moved away. But because of music and what we were doing in lacrosse, we stayed and that introduced a whole new set of friends who are more, I think you consider them more to be locals, you know, either people who were born and raised there or who live there, moved there and are living there permanently or very close to and very much a part of that scene too. So it's, we feel super blessed to have spent the time that we did there and, and have the connections we do to the Cooley region. It's a wonderful place. We love it. So now, as you stated, you, you know, you moved on and it seems like you kind of expanded on your songwriting catalog. I believe you were just kind of singing back up, singing a few songs of the Smoking Bandits. I guess your first album, Light of Day, Dark as Night. How did that album all come about? Yeah. So when we moved to Madison and the touring slowed down was right when we, uh, my wife was pregnant with our first daughter. And that was about 2011, 2012, something like that. And so I had kind of semi-retired from the road, at least not being on as much as I had been in the past. I started a residency just playing once a week at a hotel in Madison called Hotel Red and started that in August or September of 2012. And that just became the mainstay of what I do. I mean, I'd still go out and play, venture out and venture down the road every once in a while, but not nearly as much. And that became just kind of a safe haven for me as a place where I could try out new material and really just a midweek release as an early father, you know, early time as a father and, and whatnot. It was nice to have that. And I, and this, the material for the record just started to come. I mean, it took a while, you know, a few years, but then all of a sudden it really felt like there was something there. And I uh, had played a couple of the songs for Adam Gruel, who's an old friend of ours and the guitarist for Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. And he was, eager to get into producing. So he said, well, what if we took this and made an album and I'll produce it and we'll get some friends involved and we'll do this whole thing. And 
So it, it was a very slow process. We started recording, really started recording the full record in 2016 or end of 2015 into 2016. And then it released in, in 2018. I mean, I was in real, really no rush to do it. It all came together really nicely. We ended up getting a lot of really fun folks involved. Yeah. And that led to a, a couple of years of pretty intense touring for me, which was something I hadn't been used to in a while, but was, uh, yeah, it, it went really, really well. We're really proud of it. You know, that's kind of snowballed into your sophomore solo LP that's coming out here. What is the process with releasing something like that? Was that recorded in a large part during this COVID this past 10 months or was it before that? It was actually just shy of it. So we, we went in, I had met Tim Carbone, who's a renowned producer and he's a, a fiddler for a band called Railroad Earth, who I'm a huge fan of Railroad Earth and have been for a long time. And I met Tim because my first record, Light of Day, Dark of Night, was released on Low High Records, of which Chad Staley, who I know you know Chad, he's a, a part of that record label, as is Tim and Todd Snyder was one of the founders, I think. And there's a nice group there. And anyway, Tim and I were introduced to each other and we became pretty fast friends. My wife and I were out east for a wedding. A good buddy of mine lives like 10 minutes from Tim and his wife in, in far eastern Pennsylvania. And um, we were out there and we spent a day with Tim and he gave us a tour of his kind of his home studio. And it was really in a, in a pretty a thick time for us and was a, an amazing day that we had with him there. And I walked away and kind of staked my claim and said, that's where I'm recording my next record. And that was in that was the end of 2018. And then in December, 2019, we assembled all this fun group of musicians and went out there and, and spent a week recording, you know, with plans to release it sometime in 2020. And then everything kind of derailed. So to answer your question where that was actually kind of the impetus behind this other single is that Tim and I and Elliot Peck, who's from the midnight North and she also sings with Phil Lesh from the grateful dead and one of his bands, she's on the full record and recorded with us while we were out there. And this song, this new single, The Confidence Man, kind of came up. I started working on it, got them involved. We collaborated on it. And with the unknown of when it was we're going to or when it will be that we're going to get this other record out, we just thought, well, you know, this this tune is really it's pretty meaningful. It's pretty pertinent to the times right now. I often dream of you, a smile on your face. Did the cold inside you thaw? Still personified, a calloused embrace, one that's worn this soul down wrong. You scream the pain's what follows you, but by the hand you lead it all. A bleeding heart that guides you, forever aimless, nothing more. Don't you personally, feel politically, wrong? societally, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say socially we actually got the the final mixes for it but we recorded all at our home studio so i did my part at my little studio here tim did his at his studio and elliot did hers in her studio and then we put it all together and we actually got the final mixes on the morning of the of the insurrection at the u.s capitol it was kind of mm -hmm. eerie how it all came together there and then we said you know what we should just get this thing out there and for me going back to your question about how do you release in this in this time frame with the record still being a pretty big unknown and knowing we do want to do it some way shape or form this year it was a perfect vehicle for us just to get some new some new music out there and some, some we feel pertinent music to the times out there as a means to bridge the gap so it's been good There's still a lot of unknowns with the full record but we're working on it there are a lot of conversations in flight right now and uh, we're really excited about it it's all done it's ready to come it's ready to go it's just a matter of when at this point what was it like recording with these different individuals that sounds like they're in some ways kind of your, your heroes? Did it automatically start to make sense when you started talking to these folks or was it something that kind of grew into or was, yeah, it was, it was a, a humbling experience to say the least, honestly. I mean, Tim getting to know him pretty well up front really helped. I think my mentality going into it. And it was also really the first time that I, regardless of who was involved, it's really the first time that I was, going into a recording experience of my own material where it was, you have from this day to this day and we're going to get everything done and we're going to get everybody in here and out of here. And Tim is just a masterful producer and the way that he organized the whole thing and helped to bring it all together along with the folks that I was able to bring to the table as well. It was a process, but the first day I walked into the studio, I'll, I'll never forget it. 
I walked in and Tim said, okay, so your station is going to be in this room. The studio is like this old hotel. So it's very fragmented. All the rooms, you know, it's not like a big open studio. It's, it's like the third floor of this old, this beautiful old hotel. And he said, so your room's going to be over here. And I was sitting right face to face, basically through these French doors with Carrie Harmon, who's the railroad earth drummer and, and known to be one of the best bluegrass drummers in the world. And somebody <laughs> I had been watching for a long time. And, and, you know, he and I were deadlocked for five days in getting all this stuff laid down. And so it was, i almost didn't have time to have it be as surreal as I think it was in retrospect when I got through it and bringing in somebody like Elliot, who's just such a wonderful person on top of an amazing musician and the people that she's involved with and singing with being Phil Esch and his son, Graham, who she formed the Midnight North with and whatnot. In the moment, it was productive and it was magical and it was awesome. When I, when I got through it and looked back on it, it was like, holy cow, <laughs> you know, it was, it was kind of, it was a, it was a pretty humbling experience. They've all become really close friends now. And, and Tim and Elliot and I released that single, as I've mentioned, and we're actually going to plan on doing some trio touring together when pandemic lifts, which is going to be awesome. So really some really cool things that came out of it. And I'm, I'm very fortunate and feel really good about where things are at for sure. You kind of mentioned that things are up in the air, but is there anything particular that's coming down the road that you're excited about, or maybe even the end of 2021? It is this record, honestly. It's, and I, I talk, I talked as if it was totally up in the air, but I mean, as I mentioned, the record is done. We have all the final mixes and we are planning the release and involved in the record, of course, is Tim as the producer and Carrie, who I mentioned, but Mike Robinson, who also plays with Railroad Earth, he's their multi-instrumentalist. He's on the record along with Jacob Jolliffe, who's a, a great mandolin player. He was on my first record as well. He's there. Tony Trishka, who's all-time banjo great. He actually, I think he actually taught Bela Fleck how to play banjo or something. That's a story <laughs> that I heard. I mean, he's, and so he's, he's on the record and, then, of course, a couple of my mainstays in Kenny Lizer, who, who plays uh, with Wheelhouse here, and Kevin Rao, who's in Buffalo Gospel. I mean, I've known those guys for a long time, and they were out there with me, too. And we're all rallying behind the notion that we're going to get this thing out there this year. Low High Records is going to put it out, which is going to be great. So we just kind of got through all of those phases, and now it's just a matter of strategically planning for when it is. But I don't think I want to sit on this one too long. We're really excited to get it out there, and I'm pretty sure it'll happen at some point in time in 2021. If people want to find out more or follow along, you know, find out what's happening, uh, coming down the road, what's the best avenue for, for them? All social media is great. Um, Pat Ferguson Music is where you can find me on both Facebook and Instagram. You can also find me on Spotify. This new single is performing really well, actually, on Spotify, which is great. And you can find me there. Just Pat Ferguson is there. Otherwise, my website has all of this info, too, and that's www.patfergusonmusic.com. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it. 